you'd like to be our next guest on End to Asks, just click the link below. Hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, and welcome to another episode of End to Asks. I'm Caitlin Bullock. And I'm Adam Colazetti. We're the founders of Enta, and uh, today we have wonderful Megan Barefoot with us. And you were telling me, I, I think it was you were telling me when we first met that um, how much doctors actually get nutritional training. Do they, it wasn't a lot. Yes, the last I heard, um, most um, Western doctors get about 40 hours. I think that was the last estimate I heard, which is basically one week of nutrition. They, they learn the basics. What's a protein? What's a fat? What's a carbohydrate? How do those interact with the enzymes in the body? And that's it. And then they go from there, right? And then there's specific protocols. I'm sure they learn for specific illnesses in the body. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's that's kind of concerning, right? Like if you think about it, that's every day we're putting stuff in our body and, and it's having an impact. And I mean... I'm definitely not educated on it. And if a doctor is getting 40 hours and they might have their focus somewhere else, like it's really worth knowing somebody who actually knows this stuff inside and out. I think so. (laughs) Huge. Well, like, so, you know, I'm gluten-free. Right. And I, and everybody's like, oh, well, did you get tested kind of thing? And I was like, well, no, but when I switched, it was such a huge difference. Like I wouldn't even question it anymore. And like, that just like you said living well oh and my goodness to your body so who cares if who cares if there's a test for it if you feel better your body's telling you something right mm-hmm. listen to it well and i think it's it's really timely right now i mean a lot of people are right. working from home or have been laid off or have kids at home and it's just crazy right We're under a lot of change and change is stressful and by simply changing making some changes to your diet, you can actually calm that stress down in your body. Absolutely. You help your body deal with that stress and process it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's really. really Inflammation is at the root of a lot of illnesses in our society. And what we eat can either help take that inflammation away or can add to it. Really? Really important. Absolutely. it's not just an injury, like it's, you know, you get, you pull a muscle or whatever, or you do something, you get inflammation. Mm-hmm. It's like, Absolutely. It's just, one of the most inflammatory that. foods you can put in your body is sugar, which is why when Adam had a surgery, I really encouraged him to take sugar completely <laughs> out of his diet for- And that's the, hard. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard. It's in everything. Well, uh, and it's, especially for Adam, because he's a sweet tooth. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and like you said, everyone is like wishing you well, right? So they bring you chocolates and stuff. So I was yeah, like, pile. Yeah, <laughs> man's like, no sugar. I'm like, yeah. Does that mean I can't eat chocolate yeah. anymore? That's Absolutely really not. Chocolate example. is a health food. What are you talking about? Yeah. What you need to discover is real chocolate, raw chocolate. And mm-hmm. you can make it yourself, Caitlin, in your own house. You get cacao, you get cacao butter, real non-processed cacao. It's so good and it tastes amazing. And I feel like it's an amazing vehicle to health because what doesn't taste good dipped in chocolate? You can take your chocolate, put anything in it and it tastes amazing. So why not put chocolate on everything? I love it. I'm so I don't have to give up so chocolate. full of amazing nutrients. If your iron's low, if your magnesium's low, right. amazing. And the cacao has chemicals in it that will actually stimulate energy, not it will help your body make energy rather than like be a stimulant, like caffeine, oh. right? A lot of people have coffee for breakfast. I actually have dark raw chocolate for breakfast because it helps my body produce energy, not stimulate it to, and then drain it of its energy later, right? With caffeine, you get this like energy high and then you crash, just like sugar, the stimulant. Whereas chocolate, not so much. Keeps (laughs) you going all day. Right. Can you send me that recipe, Megan, please? I definitely will. Oh yeah. Right. (laughs) Make it So do you have, so when is, when is a good time? Like what kind of person should come see a nutritionist? Like we're talking younger people, older people, 
when it's I, a problem before it's a, like when when should they come see you this is a loaded question adam i think every <laughs> single person should yeah. have their nutrition evaluated if they want to live long and they want to live well if you have goals like i my daughter found out that people die at some point when my grandparents passed mm -hmm. away and she figured out that I don't live with my parents and that she's going to have to move out someday. And like, it was just a really hard day for her when she figured this all out. So I promised her I would live till I was 110 because that's like a really big number for a little kid. Okay. And, um, and nobody she knows is that old. So she was totally satisfied with that. And, um, and so now I have this goal of living till I'm 110, but Adam, I don't want to live, um, like most people live in the old folks homes. I want to be out skiing. I want to be able to walk outside and not worry about things. Like I want to be active and I want to live well. So I feel like anyone who has the goal to stay healthy and live long needs to have an evaluation of their nutrition and anyone who is dealing with any kind of inflammation in the body. Um, I personally think young kids as they're starting to kind of move out and go out on their own should have a little, you know, one month program. I work with a lot of teenagers that are just really concerned about, I don't know how to feed myself and I have to move out next year. Mm, right. Like that's a, that's kind of a big thing. And then also anyone who's having symptoms and they don't really like, they keep getting told that, you know, everything's fine. You're healthy. There's no, nothing showing up on blood tests or, and that's an amazing time to go, okay, well, maybe it's something I'm eating. Maybe it's something in my lifestyle. Maybe I need to get more movement, things like that. Well, so how do I know if I have inflammation? Like I can't look inside. So your energy is going to be really low. You may okay. get headaches more often than other people. You may feel it in your hands, your joints, where you might wake up in your you, what are you 30 like you wake up in the morning <laughs> sure. and you're stiff and <laughs> you're stiff and like you feel like what you imagine an 80 year old feels like you know what I mean those kinds of things I'm sure Adam has felt this with his hip surgery in the last little while just that limitation and that inflammation you may have swelling in your hands and feet um other things you may have skin rashes um adult acne gut issues, really bad, embarrassing gut issues are a sign that there's inflammation in your gut. Are you talking about poop? I'm always talking about poop. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Many people don't know how to poop right and they don't know what a normal poop looks like. So yeah, they think this is just my normal, but instead it could be telling you you have some inflammation in the body that needs to be taken care of. They're so used to feeling that way. They think it's normal and they don't know how good they could feel. Absolutely. Yeah. That so was do, you, me. do you that have, you. I guess that's a really interesting question, right? Like what is normal? If you've always just been like that, how do you know that it's not normal? So you must have stories of, of, of clients that have come to you and then you, you've totally changed their life. I because. absolutely do. Um, oh, tell us. Can, are you allowed so, to tell us? You don't have any names, but tell us. I, so most doctors when you go in for a checkup, they'll say, so do you poop every day? And they'll say, oh yeah, for sure. Or every other day. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's fine. They, they think that that's normal. Right. But then I deep, I dive much deeper into the story with them. And I'm like, well, what's your poop look like? And people are like, what are you talking about? Oh, look at my poop. I'm like, you should always look at your poop. It tells you so much. So you know what you're putting in your mouth, right? And the only way you can tell how all of this is working throughout your body is to look at your poop and see how it's processing. It's like the processing machine, right? So is there undigested food in your stool? Is it the right consistency? So there is a chart called the Bristol stool chart. I know everyone's going to look this up afterwards. Um, you can just Google it. It comes up and you really want your stool to be smooth and kind of s curved almost like a sausage looking um stool you don't want it too clumpy and loose and you also so a lot of people will say um i go every day but it's like 
this is no one's gonna love this right before Christmas, but it looks like little Hershey's kisses, right? Like oh. deer poop or elk poop. You know how they come out in like little chunks, little pieces. So I have like four of those a day. Well, that's not enough. That's backed up, right? And one of the biggest indications that you're not having a great bowel movement is that it doesn't feel good. You guys both can probably like attest to this, but you know, you know when you have a good poop. And it's like, oh yeah, that was amazing. Glorious. Right. Whole thing about glorious poop. You should <laughs> feel good. You should feel empty. You should be ready. You should be going for it for the day. Like yeah. that okay, was good. Well, that was fine, dance, right? right? <laughs> no. You want to cheer. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about it, but serious, you know when you have a good poop. I am never going to be able to uh, go to the washroom without thinking about this story. Man. That's <laughs> right. Look at your poop. It tells you a lot. <laughs> but I will. I, I absolutely will. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as we did. So remember, if you know somebody who should be our guest on our next show, just click the link below. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe so that you'll never miss an episode.